patch 7.14 is the biggest patch that Riot has put out all year long, and that includes the mid-season patch, and that includes the preseason patches as well. Now, what exactly is going on in patch 7.14? There's a lot of stuff happening in patch 7.14. There's hot fixes, there's uh, older champions that are coming back, there's newer champions who are getting you know nerfed a bit, item changes, lethality is making a big comeback. There's a whole lot of stuff in this video, and I'm gonna try and get through all of it while kind of giving you know my opinion on the changes and how I think the patch is going so far and how I think the patch will play out now. The first thing that I want to get into is the hotfixes. There there were, as you guys know by watching this channel, there were singe changes and he was hotfixed a bit because Riot said he was too strong. Not only that, just today I think, yep, they hotfixed Duskblade. So what they did to Duskblade, they wanted to uh, take some power away. The base damage was reduced to 55 from 105. And I think in 7.15 they're going to nerf it further. So... Without further ado, let's go ahead and get into patch 7.14. Duskblade of Drakthar, hotfix, like it just went over. On the 13th, they hotfixed Singe. They are hot nerfed Singed, I'll say. They reduced his base they reduced his base health, increased his health growth, and they increased the cooldown of his ult at rank 1 and 11 um, by 20 and 10 seconds respectively. They, I have made two videos, I think, on this alone. So if you guys want to check those out, um, one of them is a rant video with Chimso, which I think is the last video that I uploaded actually. So you guys can check that out for my opinion on this. Um, new, new. Last patches hits to last patches hits to new new's survivability weren't enough to stop the eighty from rolling over his competition. So we got a few more. Just. Hot nerfing Nunu more than he already has been, I guess. He's <laughs> I don't know. I I like having Nunu in games. I think Nunu's like he has a lot of counterplay. Like, yeah, he can get objectives and shit, but he's not exactly the greatest team fighter. So he's like a discount Ivern, basically. And now that I I I think now that Ivern's been pretty much nerfed out of existence, that Nunu's been seeing a lot of play and just fulfilling the same role basically of controlling the jungle. But obviously, I guess Riot doesn't want that. They probably just think it's fucking boring and want big flashy junglers to be played at world. So they're just, you know, slowly putting nerf bats down on Nunu. Poor Nunu. Sucks to be you, I guess. Never strong at the end of the year. Except, except I think um, Bengi played him at worlds one year. SKT Bengi. And I think they won that game. Because he's apparently, like, the best Nunu player in the world or some shit like that. Um, who knows? I'm not a big Nunu expert, but, you know, base stat and stat nerfs are always hurt so sorry Nunu but <laughs> we got hit too so champions Kane Kane uh very very underwhelming seems this patch uh everyone's saying that the darkened Kane the tanky Kane the red one is better than the blue assassin Kane and I tend to agree the red one has more crowd control he has more consistent damage it's not as high of burst but he's more consistent damage and he heals himself so he's just more of a sustained damage threat whereas the assassin can you just kind of kill really quickly and he doesn't really have a whole lot of cc um you guys know what kane does i'm sure you probably played against it by now it's not he's not the craziest champion the problem i think with kane is his e so what is what does kane's e do his e it like lets him walk through walls heal himself become invulnerable while he's like in the wall except except i think he can um he can be hooked out of it and stuff like that and if the wall's thin enough you can like actually like attack him so you know actually let's is this the one that i want to see kane abilities he can gain a burst of movement speed and be able to walk through walls for a few moments. When he first enters the wall, he'll heal for a small amount, and the duration of Shadow Step will be greatly extended. Kane won't get the duration extension if he's in combat with any champions. And if he's in assassin mode, he gains additional movement speed and immunity slow. So he's not immune, but as the blue Kane, he gets more MS and slow immunity. So basically, you never have this because you never want to fucking go blue Kane. Um, but yeah, I think because of this ability alone, they can never make Kane too powerful. Like, look at this shit. This shit's crazy. Like, 
if if they overbuff Kane, this ability just makes him like the most powerful champion in the game, probably. And I think for that reason, you'll never like if they ever overbuff Kane, they're just gonna hot fix him. I don't think Kane's like because he has so much power in this one ability. It's hard to ever give Kane like more strength in other areas. They have to take strength away from E in order to give him more power in other areas, and that's not something I think that you can really do considering. Like, this seems to be the fundamental, like, oh, look at me, I'm Kane thing, so. Oh, well. Another, um, another overtuned champion. No, I guess he's undertuned, actually. He's he's definitely weak right now. They'll probably buff him, but if they overbuff him, it's going to be scary shit to play against him just because of this ability. All right, Alistar. What have they done to Alistar? <laughs> This is the same buff and the same nerf they do to Alistar every few months. Unbreakable will. Alistar has always needed to get up close and personal, but these days he has to stay there a bit longer to access the full extent of his crowd control. As a result, the Minotaur needs to be tankier when he comes to a fight. They they have to be really careful when they do this to, this change to Alistar, and then they they'll I guarantee you they will change this back. Because they've done this like three times now. The reason that they're scared of giving Alistar 55% damage reduction at level 6 is because he just tower dives for free. It's not, you, the tower doesn't hurt him. Like, no one hurts him that early on because no one has that much damage early on to deal with 55% damage reduction. And that's why they're scared of giving Alistar this much damage reduction early on. And they'll probably revert this. If there's anyone, like, who's a really experienced Alistar player... Um, if you want to leave your opinion in the comments, go ahead. I'd I'd love to read it. But I just kind of think that Riot doesn't really know what to do with Alistar. And they just kind of keep doing this back and forth thing with Ultimate. Oh, we'll, we'll buff it this patch. We'll nerf it this patch. We'll buff it again later. We'll nerf it again later. We'll see how it goes. So the support class as a whole is already overloaded as fuck. Um, I think Thresh kind of crowds out a lot of melee supports, except Braum. But I think for most melee supports, Thresh kind of just crowds them out. But I, I, so I can see Alistar needing something like this, but I don't think it's going to make him like super strong. It, it, it will make him stronger for sure. But I still think right, we'll end up reverting this change because that's just what they do with Alistar. Caitlyn nerfs attack speed per level down. Thank God. Caitlyn is pure cancer from start of the game until finish. Mostly because of the trap mechanic giving her an auto headshot that also crits. Um, that change is ridiculous, but this change will make her late game a little bit less oppressive in that she just won't get as many auto attacks off. So kudos, right? Appreciate it. You very slightly nerfed a skin selling champion. Thanks. <laughs> no, but seriously, it's um it's an okay change. I I, I really do think that they're scared of um over nerfing Caitlyn because she's such a popular character, so they probably won't over nerf her. She will still be really strong late game, I think, just not quite not as strong. The thing about Caitlyn is, because of her range, you you really need to buy a defensive item on her because even late game six fifty range is a lot, and if you consider the fact that she doubles her range when someone steps on her trap, that's even crazier. She is one of the longest range eighty carries. She's Super consistent in that she has two abilities to appeal for herself, traps and net. And that means that, you know, with six a six item build, Caitlyn's super strong. With the with a five item build, she's not as strong as other AD carries, but the six item build, she's as strong or superior, depending on the matchup. Of course, if you're playing Caitlyn versus like a Kogma, you know, she might not be as strong. But if you're playing Caitlyn versus like a Jinx, it's more in Caitlyn's favor than you might think. If you're playing Caitlyn versus a Tristana and you're both six items, it's way more on Caitlyn's favor than you might think, just because of you know her consistency, her range, and her her ability to stay safe. So, uh, necessary change, I think, but I don't think it'll change that much. I think after they nerf lethality items, Caitlyn will come roaring right back into the meta. So, we'll see what happens. Cho'Gath, big Cho'Gath changes this patch. E now only applies to the next three attacks, but does significantly more damage. Q mana cost down, W silence, duration up earlier ranks. This is cool. Um, having Vorpal Spikes just be a super basic boring, you toggle it on, you toggle it off ability, it, it really kind of sucked. I think that with 
But this chance... Okay, hold on. What, what are they giving it? So it still has the old base damage, but... <laughs> this is cool. This is really cool. It now also has maximum health damage. 4% plus 0.5% per feast stack. And don't forget, you can get feast stacks infinitely now. So that's kind of cool. Uh, it has a small slow, which decays. That's cool. Increases your attack range by 50. Resets Cho's basic attack timer. Says so auto attack reset. That's nice. I mean, Cho'Gath has needed this. Like, when's the last time you saw Cho'Gath in a game and you're like, oh shit, that's Cho'Gath. I'm scared. Never. Never. Not since, like, season two. Maybe season three. I forget. I think it was season two that he was uh, played at IEM. And so, IEM, not IEM, uh, IPL was that tournament. IPL 5 had a bit of Cho'Gath in it. I've been playing this game for way too fucking long. Because, <laughs> wow, that is a while ago. I think IPL 5 was the one where Fnatic beat Taipei Assassins, and Taipei Assassins had just won Worlds. So, that is a long time ago. But it was either that tournament where Cho'Gath was super big, or it was Season 3 Summer split of LCS where Cho'Gath was like super popular. I think he was popular for a bit in like Season 5 or 6 as an AP mid laner, but not like for a super long time. So yeah, this is a change that Cho'Gath has needed for a while. He just, he needs more playability in his kit. He needs to be able to do shit with his spells. Uh, and I think this is good. His E, I think that's good. Um, Q rupture. They decreased the damage by five at <laughs> level five, but they decreased the mana cost by 30. Okay, that's fine. Um, w Feral Scream. The silence duration has gone up at earlier ranks, but it still caps out at two seconds. That's not going to change a whole lot. It might make for one kill like every 10 games that you wouldn't get normally, but it's really not going to change that much in the long run. Um, the real issue with Cho'Gath right now is the combination of... Okay, so there's this build that people are going. It's Rod of Ages, Warmogs, Gargoyle Stone Plate. And with the fact that Feast can infinitely stack, you just end up having like a Gargoyle Stone Plate Cho'Gath with 10,000 health flashing on your AD carry. And because his ultimate scales with his health and does true damage, he's he's just one-shotting like back lines with, with those three items. And even if the enemy team is like completely shit-stomping you, if you can hold until your Cho'Gath gets those three items and just flashes on the enemy AD carry, there's not really much they can do. Unless your team can react like faster than he can one shot them, which they can't. That's the problem with Jogath right now. It's a problem with, it's a problem with items. It's not. I don't think it's a problem with the character. I think the character himself is mostly okay, but I think Gargoyle Stone Plate just makes him insane, which is un kind of unfair because they're they're going to end up nerfing Chogath because of the item. Then eventually, I promise you, they'll nerf the item too. Then never look at Chogath again, at least not for a year. Because that's what Riot does, so. We'll see you in the dumpster sooner rather than later, Cho'Gath. Sorry, buddy. Diana, another old champion that has desperately needed changes. Passive atta Passive's attack speed now procs off spell cast and increases with E rank. Passive attack now restores mana. Q cooldown reduced to early levels. W mana cost reduced to early ranks. A lot of quality of life stuff there, but I think... The, the big things are passive's attack speed now procs off spell cast and increases with E, and passive attack now restores mana. That is really cool because it kind of makes her into this like. I feel like Lich Bane almost would be so fucking good on her. Like Lich Bane and um, Nasher's Tooth would be really good on her. Um, CDR and attack speed off Nasher's Tooth on hit damage. And also, like, uh, yeah, I said attack speed. And. Lich Bane because it she the changes want her to like cast a spell auto attack ca auto attack three times cast a spell auto attack cast a spell auto attack you know they they want to make her into like this cool like magic damage fighter chick which is interesting um the problem I can see is that they didn't reduce her damage anywhere <laughs> they did not reduce her damage anywhere so. Not only will she be able to do that auto attack playstyle, she will also be able to one shot people if she gets ahead with just her QRR combo. QRWR, I think, is what it is actually. 
So that could potentially be dangerous, but I think that she's needed changes for a long time. Like like I said with Shogath, when's the last time you saw Diana and you're like, oh shit, that's a Diana. We gotta be careful. Not not for a long time. Not since season five, I think. I remember thinking that all the time in season five because season five was a season when me and S Diana two both got Challenger as one tricks. And I remember always thinking, oh shit, it's S Diana two on the other team. He's gonna shit on mid lane. He's gonna shit on everybody else. Because his character was actually pretty good back then before the game got really cancerous. Um but not so much after season five, obviously. So welcome back, Diana. I'm glad to see you in the game again. I have seen Diana in my solo queue games, which I think is fine. I'm pretty okay with it. What exactly did they change? Uh, okay, so Moon Silver Blade's attack restores mana equal to 15% of Diana's AP. Hey, that's pretty cool. So it's not a whole lot of mana that she gets back, but it's enough to like keep her going in a long fight. I think in a long fight, this will make a good amount of difference. Maybe Tanky Breezer Diana will be a thing? Probably not, considering that they didn't reduce any of her other ratios. Like, they didn't reduce just the damage straight up of any of her abilities, so. Interesting to see where they'll go with this. Q, Crescent Strike, cooldown reduce at all levels, except for level 5, so her early game's a bit better with Q. W, mana cost decrease at all levels, except for level 5. More early game benefit from that. And this is where she gets her holy shit. She gets 90% attack speed. <laughs> what? Whoa, wait, wait, wait. So, so her passive grants 20% attack speed. But if you have one point in E, it grants 50% instead. Going up to 90%. That's crazy. Wow. Hmm. I can see how that would easily become a balance problem, but I don't think she's very overpowered right now. So hopefully we see more of Diana. I like Diana. She's never really uh that hard for tanks to play against, but for squishies it's a bit of a nightmare, so good. I'm I'm tired of League of 80 carries. <laughs> so good. I'm happy with this. Speaking of things that I hate, Fiora. Thank god they nerfed Fiora. I still think she's strong as shit. She's still super strong, in my opinion, but you can actually kind of deal with her now because she can't just oppressively chase you across the entire map and team fight like a complete monster at the same time. Now she can just kind of split push, and her team fighting is a little bit weaker because she doesn't get a stupid amount of movement speed off of her R. So passive movement speed down every time she procs a vital, less movement speed overall. Good. R no longer grants a duelist dance movement speed when near the target. Duelist dances are passive. So late game Fiora, whenever she casted R on someone, she would or if she procced a vital from her passive, she would gain 50% movement speed. So imagine this from my perspective as a singed player, alright? I've had games where I've had movement speed quints, boots of swiftness, Z Zero Portal, Ludin's Echo, Dead Man's Plate, Alt Running, Ghost Running. W on Fiora, with Rylai's, by the way, you just, you could not run away from her. That's how fucking fast she was. You could not run away from her. She would, you'd pop everything. You'd have like a thousand, you have like 800 movement speed. She'd cast R on you. You can't get away. She's just as fast, if not faster, because she gets bonus movement speed from Black Cleaver in her kit. So, this is good. This is needed. Um... She can still duel people in a 1v1, which I think is fine. I just think that it also makes her team fighting weaker. Her team fighting was too strong for her being as ridiculous of a character as she is with max percent health, percent max health true damage, excuse me. So with the new Singe, what you can kind of do is whenever you see Fiora cast R on you and you're in a side lane, just put your W down, walk through it. She can't Q, she's slowed, she she can't chase you, so get shit on Fiora. I was tired of having you in literally every single game, um, or needing to use a ban on you every single game. Uh, also, Fiora, since she was buffed to, like a month after her release, her rework release in Season 5, 
she's been the absolute most cancerous matchup that Sandra has ever had in league. Not not just like during that patch or since that patch ever in the history of Sandra's bad matchup. She was worse than Nar. She was worse than Lulu. Worse than Timo. Worse than Kennen. Worse than all of them because she Sandra had a thirty six percent win rate versus Fiora. Thirty six percent in platinum plus Elo. So it was ridiculous. I'm really glad that they're taking power away from Fiora. She's still really strong for sure. Um, I think she'll be at around a 50% win rate. Really good Fiora players will notice this a lot less than really bad Fiora players. Really bad Fiora players are going to complain. They nerfed our champion too hard. This sucks. I think this is fine. Um, they'll probably give her like a compensation buff and just like increase this a tiny bit later on. But get the fuck out of here, Fiora. I'm tired of you. I miss the old Fiora. The old Fiora is actually one of my favorite characters ever. I loved playing. The old Fiora was probably my favorite character ever, actually. I know I play only Singe, really. And sure, I love Singe to death, but some of the most fun I've ever had in League of Legends was playing the original Fiora, getting a Hydra and just ulting into a team and having that splash damage go around and fucking one-shotting a Squishy if with your Q repost Q, like, auto-auto combo. Ooh, that was fun. That was a lot of fun. But Riot didn't think Riot didn't think that was fun, so <laughs> they gave us this monstrosity instead. Sad, sad time. Um Okay, Garen. Garen Garen Garen. People are saying he's really strong. I haven't really noticed it. Um but yet another older champion that I'm glad to see Riot is touching up on. Passive modernization and buff. W now grants damage reduction and tenacity briefly after activation. EAD ratio per spin up. So, passive. Perseverance. His out of combat health regen went from 2-4-10% at levels 1-11-16 to 2% and to 8% maximum health per 5 seconds at level 11. His out of combat timer went down... From 964 at 11116 to 94 seconds at 111. New passive, or new aspect of the passive, Damascian Boldness. Regeneration increases to 4 or 16% maximum health per 5 seconds when Garen is below 25% or 50% maximum health at levels 1 and 11. So that's cool. Um, he basically gets his old level 11 health regen at level 1 if he's below 25%, and at level 11, he gets 16%, which is way more than the old 10%, if he's below 50%. So maybe Garen is the type of champion where you can like go in and fight for a bit, and then like leave the fight, and then come right the fuck back in after 4 seconds, and just continue wailing on people with your full health bar. That'd be kind of cool, I like that. I think this is a good change. I definitely don't think that it's enough for him because I think Hashinshin made a really good video about this. But basically, people can just kind of ignore Garen's damage if he's next to you. This is the problem that Singed used to have. I still sometimes has, I think. But this is a really big problem with older champions, older bruisers. You can just kind of ignore their damage, when, especially when they're like in an advantageous position to where they should be winning a fight. Like, if Garen is on top of your back line, they fucked up really bad. Because Garen doesn't have a way to get to them besides walking at them. So if Garen gets next to your back line, they should just die. It's so fu It's so hard. Like, you guys hear me talk all the time about how hard it is for Singed to get on the enemy back line. Imagine doing that with fucking Garen. <laughs> What does Garen have to go on the back line? He has a small movement speed bonus from Q. That's it. And it doesn't even last that long. <laughs> it's so hard to do it with Garen. You pretty much have to flash. And if you don't have flash up, then you're not getting on that back line. And you're not going to be able to kill anything. And, and the problem is, Garen can't even like really kill the front line either. Like, yeah, his E shreds armor. And if you buy Cleaver, it shreds armor too. But by the time that Garen has maximum stacks of armor shred on a tank, they just back off. They get healed. Uh, you can't really... <laughs> he needs... He needs some, like, wacky, crazy shit. Maybe, like, I think this is an idea that Hashinshin had, actually. 
Um, I'll link his video in the description because since I'm borrowing so many of his ideas, but Hashinshin had this idea for Garen where his villain, you should get bonus movement speed towards them and bonus damage reduction from them, which would be really cool, I think. That would help Garen kind of just wade through a fight and reach his villain, which late game, more often than not, is going to be the enemy AD carry. So... If... <sighs> Well, I, 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 I want to say that the problem with simple champions like Garen is that if you make them too strong, they run over people, but that's not true. Because for simple... This is the same with Singed, actually. For simple champions like Singed and Garen, if you make them... Well, I, I think Riot's too scared of making them strong for the wrong reason. They're, they're scared of making champions like Singed and Garen strong because they're so simple to play that they think we'll just run over people, but at the same time... You have to understand that simple champions like Sinjin and Garen are really fucking easy to, easy to play against, too. Because you know what they're going to do. They can only really do one fucking thing. And that's go forward. Like, they don't really have a different choice. And I think for that reason, they also have the most easy counterplay. And a lot of the time, I think when balancing champions like that, Riot doesn't take that into account. So. We will see what they do with Garen. Oh, I have to talk about Courage still. Courage now displays how much damage Garen is mitigating. Now grants Garen 60% damage reduction and tenacity for the first 0.75 seconds, returning to the normal 30% damage reduction for the remaining duration thereafter. So if you use this to block a big ability, it'd probably be really, really clutch. What's like um a really strong ability that also crowd controls? Huh. I'm trying to think of like a really huge nuking ability lee sin kick all right think about using this on lee sins well no you can't use an aster to reduce knockback that is the shitty part huh oh well we'll use vigor as an example um no annie annie annie's a great example so think about like a super fed annie right she has her passive up she is like 900 fucking ap and you're the only damage threat on your team you're carrying the shit out of your team with garen you know, you're you're somehow managing to kill their carries, and you know, you're shredding that tank. You've killed her once or twice, but she's killed your entire team several times throughout the game, and you're at the very last, like, pivotal fucking Baron fight that would end up deciding the game, and Annie sees you. She sees little old Garen, she's like, you know what? I'm gonna fuck this guy up. So she casts Tibbers on you, thinking with her 900 AP that she'll be able to, com like, one or two combo you and kill you, especially with the burst damage of Tibbers. But then as you see the bear about to pop up, you press Courage, and that 60% damage reduction and 60% tenacity means that you kind of shrug it off, and now you're running at Annie. Poor little Annie. You're going to fucking silence her and spin on her. Probably not kill her because you're still Garen, and you don't really kill people as that champion. Don't, don't be silly. But she'd still be like, what the hell? You know? How do you do that? That's cool. I think that's cool. He does need more damage, though. I think Garen does need more damage. I don't think anyone's gonna will really disagree with me there. E judgment. A little bit more damage on each drink. Not that much to talk about. Two, I think like two percent each drink. Not that much at all. So good for him. Needs more though. Moving on. Ivern. Cancer. 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 Cancer champion. The worst part about Ivern is that he's just a strictly better version of Nunu. <laughs> like, Ivern does everything Nunu does, but he does it better. And he does it safer. He can he, he can insta-clear camps. He can he can steal jungle camps from the enemy really quickly. Uh, while being able to move over walls though, which I mean Nunu can't do. Ivern can cast Q on the dragon and move over walls. Fucking Ivern can cast Q on Oh, what is that thing? Rift Herald and Moor Walls. He can shield himself. Span he can shield his teammates with that cancer shield that does damage and slows. He has this stupid ability called Brushmaker where he like actually just spawns brushes on the ground that the enemy can't see into. I guess you can't see into them either because they're neutral. But he can deny vision with them around like a dragon or a baron. Um, I think what they... Why they changed this though is that 
whenever they were casting it from 1600 range, it was giving a vision into a bush where they would put it into and let, letting Ivern scout out bushes. I think that was part of what made him so absolutely ridiculously strong was you could just scout bushes from 1600 units away. Now you can't really do that because you have to walk up super close. So that's good. Um, it's meant to hit Ivern's utility and safety. We'll follow up accordingly. Fuck Ivern. Don't follow up accordingly. In fact, just nerf it more. Make it 500 range. Fuck Ivern, in my opinion. Uh, no, but seriously, this is this is fine. I think <laughs> a good Ivern player will just... You don't want to play versus a good Ivern player. They're hard to deal with for pretty much everybody because if your team is ahead, or if your carries are ahead and you have Ivern, you're probably not going to kill their carries. He's too good at keeping them safe. And he's too good at keeping his team safe because he just builds fucking six support items and he gets like a locket and a fucking ardent sensor, I think, also gives shielding a bonus shielding. I think he gets the um what's that that little AoE healing item? I don't even know what it's called. I just know what it does. God, I haven't played this game in a while. Um Who cares? The AoE healing item, you know what I'm talking about. Um which, uh, yeah, he's good at keeping. He's he's just too good overall, and they they've nerfed him a few patches in a row, and they might hit him more. But I think this might be like the nail in the Ivern coffin for a bit. But that's good. Ramus, get another older champion who needs some love. Self slow on W decrease in intensity. So basically, whenever someone would cast defensive ball curl as Ramus, it would slow him. But it's fucking slowing him way too much. It was slowing him by 60%. Now it's 30%. Um, and I guess it also increases the Iceborne Gauntlet area, which is fine. I don't think people really build Iceborne Gauntlet on Ramus, but if you're one of the people that did, then hey, good for you, buddy. You got you got, small, you got two buffs instead of one if you're Iceborne Gauntlet Ramus main. Good for you. Um, I don't think Ramus is actually in that bad of a spot compared to other older champions. I think Ramus is actually okay. Especially now with the fucking lethality shit. You just need a tank that might be able to stack hella armor and do damage, so that could be good. They did, um, this is true. The The new Thornmill gives him less energy, so maybe he needs some more buffs along the way. But, cause, just because it gives less armor, and the more armor you have on Ramus, the more damage you do. So, this is good, I think. They'll probably need a little bit more of a buff as time goes on, though. In my opinion. Singed. I've already made a bunch of videos on this. Um, if you guys want to see those videos, go ahead and go through my video history. But I've made a ton of new Singed stuff. Especially regarding the changes. I've made a few testing videos. I'm going to, I'm going to be uploading more as well. So, get excited for that. Um, because I've already talked about it so much, I'm just going to go ahead and skip them and go straight to Tarek. Mana region increased to early levels. Q heals more. Charge model updated. E cooldowns, higher early, lower later. E deals more damage and stuns for the same duration, all ranks. So, I think this, at level 1, is going to be so much fucking stronger than what it used to be. E might be, you're probably just going to max Q first, I think. Because look at all the shit that they've added to Q. Alright, they gave him 1% of his max HP scaling, and they gave him, well, maybe I'm wrong, actually. Oh, what? This holds 5 charges at level 5? Wow, that could be really good, actually. No, 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 I take that back. Yeah, I take that back. You're going to max E first, actually. You're totally going to max E first. Look at the shit you get for maxing E. You get... So much more. <laughs> Look at that level 2 and 3 difference. Holy crap. That is such a big damage spike early on. You're definitely going to max E first. Wow. Just because of the damage and cooldown. This this gives you max health scaling. So, I mean, you don't even get base damage for leveling it up anymore. You just get your level 2 base damage and then... Yeah, you're not going to... You're going to max E first now for sure on Tarek. He's going to play pretty much the fucking same, though. <laughs> There's not much that's going to change about Tark, I think. Well, this is interesting. 
Bravado and Powered Attacks reduce Starlight Touch's cooldown by one second and instantly grant a charge. So... Oh! CDR! For sure. Well, every support gets 45% CDR. I'm not a support expert. I probably sound like a fucking idiot right now, but I think with him being able to hold five charges, you're going to see a lot more Tarek, like, getting the fuck in there instead of, like, moving back and killing for any carries, because, well, no, that'd still be good, because you can still stun and auto-attack whoever the fuck is attacking your AD carry and get your five charges really quickly, heal again, you know, do it again, get five charges, heal again. That'd be cool, I think, that'd be cool. I just totally hit my microphone, so sorry about that, if you heard that, but, hmm. I don't know. I don't know enough about Tarek to like really give a good opinion on this, I think. Yeah, I I hmm. I think that you're just gonna because because the healing on on Q, yeah, you're definitely maxing Q second. Yep. Gotcha. Well, that kind of sucks, actually, because that gives him so much less flexibility in his level order. Because if you don't max E first now, then you're losing damage. And you're not gaining that much healing in return. Because the scaling is down, and you don't get base. That fucking sucks. Actually, yeah. This sucks for Tark, because you have to max... Okay, yeah. Moving on. I don't know about supports that much. Yorick. Revert Yorick, in my opinion. I don't know, actually. The New York is kind of cool. Mistwalker base damage down early game. Maiden of the Mist's health up late game. Mistwalker is more responsive. Graves more consistent. Passive Shepherd of Souls. Mistwalker is now attacking immediately upon landing from the E-Jump. Well, that's good. Because they just stand there for a few seconds before starting to fight shit. And half the time, if you're ranged, you can just instantly kill them anyways. They take one or two auto attacks to kill. So, that's good. I almost think that they just need more health. Oh, excuse me. Because two abilities, they die slowly, but versus auto attackers, they die instantly. So maybe make abilities do more damage to them, make auto attacks do less, or who knows. Oh, well, that's cool. They... <laughs> mm. I don't like that. They reduced the, the Mistwalker base damage from 10 to 2, and they only increased their base damage by 5 at level 18. That <sighs> I don't know what they're doing here. It's not like Yorick is even oppressively powerful in any way, shape, or form. Yeah, he's an okay split pusher. But in this meta, if you split push, you lose. For a long time it's been for a long time split pushes have been kinda weak just because you get every team gets home guards for free, but this is just hurting his early game for not that much of a late game buff. Morning Mist reaction range, 1400. So, mm, so, so they'll, they'll attack a little bit more quickly whenever you throw your W down and from a farther distance. But, oh, also Grave Despawn range increased to 2000 from 1600, so... I guess you can summon them from farther away too. Interesting, but this isn't going to help York that much. Our Eulogy of Isles, his Maiden of the Mist thing. The cooldown was decreased by 20 seconds, level 2. 40 second cooldown reduction at level 3. That's big. That is big for sure. She gains more health, 1,000 more health at level 16 also. Okay, so I think late game that ultimate will start fucking some stuff up. You put some Mistwalkers down with her, you, or you put her down, summon some Mistwalkers, go fight the enemy at like Elder Dragon or something while you're splitting top lane. Well, while they're splitting top lane, that would work, I think. That'd be really good. But then the problem is you don't have it in the team fight, and you might as well just split push with her instead. That's the problem with Yorick is if you don't if you you don't bring your ultimate to a fight, then you're not like, going to do that much damage. But if you leave her in the lane by yourself, then she'll split. But odds are you'll lose the fight that you go to. When ideally you want to leave her in the lane to split and then go win the fight and get like a freebie. But hmm, I almost feel like his Mistwalker should gain like a small portion of Yorick's on hit effects. Like 
maybe Mist Walker should like if he has a red buff, like do a really small um red buff true damage, like one true damage per auto attack or some small shit like that, like two percent slow per Mist Walker or something. That would be kind of cool, but I don't think a riot would be wanting to do that. Just because they probably think, oh well Yorick will just get Nasher's tooth and now we can't play versus Yorick. Dur -dur -dur. I don't know. I, I do think Yorick needs some help, though. He's not a champion that you ever really see, and you're like, oh god, it's a Yorick, what do I do? We're all gonna die. No. No one does that. Um, These were hot fixes from last patch. These don't matter. Alright, moving on to items. Thorn Mail. I think this is one of the biggest changes of this patch. So, basically... Thornmail is just almost a completely new item now. It costs 2,900 gold, gives 250 health, 25 less armor, and the uh, the passive is updated. So basically, whenever you're hit by a basic attack now, it reflects 25 damage plus 10% of your bonus armor and inflicts grievous wounds, and it has the Randuin's Omen attack speed slow passive. So you're actually reflecting less damage than you would have with the old Thornmail, because the old Thornmail had a higher base, I think. But... Uh, it also had more armor on itself to skill with itself. So you're reflecting less damage than the old Thornmail, but in return, you have health and you have Grievous Wounds and attack speed slow. Grievous Wounds, I can, I can... Grievous Wounds is so, 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 so valuable versus champion AD carries in modern League of Legends because it feels like every AD carry, if they have like even one or two lifesteal items and even if you have one lifesteal item and fucking warlords, then you just can't kill them because they sustain way too hard, especially as a tank or a bruiser. It's so hard. But I think with this thorn mail, you put grievous wounds on them, and all of a sudden their healing is a little bit gamped, and you can actually fight them late game with their support butt buddying them. But I think this is good. I think this thorn mail change is good. I like it a lot. This is this is one of the biggest changes of this patch, definitely. A lot of people are saying that this thorn mail sucks. I disagree. I think that the thorn mail is amazing. I think that I think that they'll actually nerf this thorn mail because it's actually you know AD carries are going to be butt hurt and cry. Oh no, I'm silver and I'm affected by grievous wounds. Everybody has grievous wounds. I can't life steal back to full HP in two autos, and tanks can the tanks can sustain my damage all of a sudden. They'll probably nerf it just because silver AD carries are going to cry on the internet. Sadly, uh, bramble vest. Whew. Bramble Vest is something that's really important that the game's needed for a long time, I think. Um, because certain champions, you know, once they get lifesteal early game, you just, or get any form of sustain early game, you just, you can't do anything to them. Because a lot of champions' play patterns don't have burst. A lot of champions' play patterns revolve around, like, chunking or doing small amounts of damage over long periods of time, but making it consistent. You know, those champions don't or before this patch we're not really able to stop healing that well especially from you know lifesteal items but with this you know if you get into a fight with someone who has a lifesteal item then all of a sudden they can't just drain tank you they can't just sit there and heal off of you forever because they have lifesteal and you know you don't have grievous wounds this actually makes it so Hey, you know, maybe I should stop auto attacking this fucking person who's reflecting my damage a little bit because I can't out sustain it by healing through it. So, this is good. Bramble vest. I think, I think maybe bramble vest should probably cost a thousand gold. Honestly, nine hundred is a little bit low because that's what that's what bramble vest costs. Cloth armor plus cloth armor plus three hundred equals nine hundred. I think it should cost a thousand because it is very, very, very useful early game versus champions that heal. So. Or even just champion, like auto attackers in general. Like Tabby plus Bramble Vest versus like Yasuo top lane, he can't do anything to you. So, good. Good items, I love it. Um, hope to see more crazy shit like Bramble Vest and Thornmill, but they'll probably change it. Ancient coin line. <laughs> I've heard about this garbage. This like support quest stuff. Quest reward now grants movement speed to approaching allies instead of an early skill point. So they basically just said fuck it to whatever they were doing before with Ancient Coin, and they were like, nearby allies gain 8% movement speed of moving towards you. Janna with this 
Janna with the ancient coin items. I just hit my microphone again. I'm sorry. Janna with the ancient coin items is going to be really crazy because Janna already has a passive where your allies move towards you quicker. So I think Janna with this is like I'm just imagining Janna and Sandwich together. Like you have to save your Janna, or your, or your team has to like run to your AD carry to protect them. Janna's leading the way. You're all running behind Janna. Sandwich starts picking up movement speed from his teammates. Gets like. 50% movement speed, he's running towards Janna, he gets super fast, he runs past Janna super, super fast, gets to the AD carry and saves them. Cool item, I think. Cool item. So. Supports are a little bit overloaded with all the different items that they can have in their kit. Right now, they all do so much amazing shit. Uh, not in their kit, sorry. Not items in their kit, items in their inventory that all do so much different amazing shit. But I think this is understandable, at least, instead of like just giving them a free ability, which is kind of stupid. Eventually, they're going to have eventually Riot is going to have to start taking power away from support itemization or support abilities because they do genuinely have too much of everything except damage. Even then, some supports just do shit tons of damage anyways. So... Cool change, but they'll take it away eventually. So, Randuin's Omen, not much here. They changed the build path back to what it was before, because Riot. This is actually one of the rare instances when Riot's like, okay, we fucked up. We're gonna change it back. So it also, it now it builds out of Giant's Belt, Warden's Belt, nine hundred gold, um, but it gives fifty more HP now. So a little bit better. Nothing too serious. Lethality items. Oh, God. Lethality items have been so broken this patch. Uh, they just hot fixed Duskblade today, like I talked about earlier. But lethality items have been insane this patch. They changed this so that lethality gains grants armor penetration based on your level, not the target level. So if you're if you're snowballing with lethality, you shit on you shit on everything, everything. You just shit on it. Uh, there's video. I think RF Legendary had a video on the Reddit front page where it was just a montage of him on Jace with full lethality, jumping on people, just in melee form, just hammer, auto attack, W, not even E, just hammer form down, hammer form Q, I should say, W, auto attack, and they would die. He never had to use his E. He just insta-killed people with that combo that you can't fucking react to. Completed lethality items, grant more lethality. And except for Edge of Night, less attack damage. Cool. Um, they wanted to make these items weaker for AD carries to buy, but because Lethality itself was so fucking strong, AD carries are buying Lethality anyways. Like, what, what this says to me, when, when they say less attack damage, more Lethality, is they didn't want Varus and Jin building it. Well, guess who's fucking building Lethality this patch? <laughs> Riot, everybody, and Varus and Jin because of how you managed to overbuff it for the second time in the same year. Uh, interesting, 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 interesting. Serrated Dirk, unique passive. After killing an enemy, your next damaging spell will deal 40 but physical da bonus, da bonus physical damage. To all enemies it hits, no longer grants 20 out of count movement speed. So they want to make this like a wave clear thing? Yeah, it serves as a wave clear or camp kill, camp clearing tool for champions with area of effect abilities. So what they're going for here is they don't want it to give you movement speed all the time, but they want it to they want it to give you the ability to clear your lane and then leave quickly. That's cool. I think that's a that's a very interesting way of going about being able to roam around more. Cause like what what's the negative of roaming around? You lose the S on your tower. But what if you can push your wave in and then go roam around because you can clear it faster with the headhunter passive? Well, you're still able to roam around faster because you ended up clearing and you're able to leave sooner. But there's less of a risk of you losing as much because you killed all the minions before you left. You have you have 30 seconds of freedom. So that's cool. That's cool. That's cool. Um, sadly, it builds in a poacher's dirk. I don't even want to talk about poacher's dirk because no one's going to buy this fucking item. Um, it's the same changes. It's the exact same changes. They're just throwing on a Poacher's Dirk. No one's gonna fucking buy Poacher's Dirk still. It's still shit. Duskblade of Drakthar. Oh my god. This is hotfix. Well, let's talk about it anyways. Um, lowered the AD 
increased lethality, lowered the gold cost by a lot. Uh, 350 gold lower than what it used to be, so that's kind of crazy. It, uh, Dusk Blade is very cheap now. Grants 10% CDR. And ninety plus fifteen per level, one hundred five base to three hundred sixty physical damage. Okay, so I think this was the part that they hot fixed that base damage because it was ridiculous. And the slow Night Stalker now slows a target by ninety nine percent for point two five seconds. This is. This is really insane for champions like Kha'Zix and champions like Zed, because like with Kha'Zix, if you, if you just rush Duskblade and you auto-attack someone, they're slowed by 99% for a quarter of a second. Now, if you stealth and you come out, that's about half a second, you can slow them by 99% again. You stealth and you come back out one more time, you can just do it again, which is crazy, all things considered, how much power that you know they're putting on Duskblade. Again, hot fixed, but um, self champions are going to be really, 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 really good with this. Uh, only issue is that before the hot fix, Varus and Jin were just one, one or two shotting people again, but that won't be the case because of the hot fix. I think I think the hot fix is good in terms of weakening them a bit. Uh, we can just go back up and talk about the hot fix again. So, yeah, they reduced the base damage from 105 to 55, meaning it's just less snowball early on, which, you know, I'm okay with. Um, look at the items. So now we go on to Yomu's Ghost Blade. Grants even more. Okay, so it goes from 20% movement speed to 40. Wait, out of 40 out of combat movement speed? What the shit? That's so much. 18 lethality, five five less AD. All right, thanks, right? Good thing you didn't make this item too powerful. Honestly, it's only not that powerful compared to Dusk Blade, but 40 out of combat movement speed is quite a lot of movement speed. So it's like having a, it's like having us giving a squishy character a dead man's plate that just bursts the fuck out of people, but with 40 out of combat movement speed, that's interesting. Maybe this item will replace Dusk Blade after Dusk Blade, or after the hotfix today. Not sure. Just a straight buff in every way. So, except the AD part. Other than that, straight up buff. Edge of Night grants health instead of magic resist. Lethality up. Thank fuck. All right. So much easy access to magic resistance now. I don't think Edge of Night needed to give it to you when AD carries already have Maw and Hex Drinker and shit like that. Um. So now it gives health instead, and it gives leth more lethality. Uh, not really much to talk about Edge of Night. Edge of Night is still the weakest lethality item out of the bunch. It just gives health instead of MR now because I think Riot wants more more characters to buy it. They don't want it to be like an anti magic damage item. They want it to be an like anti get caught item or like an anti burst item because it gives you the shield or whatever. So. But I, I I will say this is cool because since it doesn't have that sh that that uh, MR anymore, you can buy Edge of Night and like a Maw, which is kind of cool. It'll make it it'll make it good versus more different team comps. But for the most part, not a big change. Edge of Night, Krugs, medium sized Krugs now be smited. Ah, uh, that's good. Because a lot of the time, if if you manage to kill the big Krug early game and you have a shitty clear, you can't kill the two little ones, especially for smites or the two medium ones, especially especially for smites down because the big one just takes so fucking long to kill. But with this change, it'll be a little bit different. You can smite the middle ones. Quality of life change for every jungler out there. Vision abilities. Trundles E no longer gives vision. Ivern's W still gives vision, but the cast range is reduced. And if he is W, no longer gives vision. Cool. Quality of life changes and all that stuff. Ranked flex, no one cares. Rotating ammo, no one cares. SKTT1 skins, no one cares. Bug fixes. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. 
Fix it a bug causing Ash's passive fraud shot bonus damage to apply to inhibitors. <laughs> interesting. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Nothing too crazy. Cool chromas. Yeah, whatever. Um, but yeah, there was a whole lot in this patch. Uh, biggest patch of the year so far, easily. A lot of old champions making a resurgence. Really happy about that. Um, of course, I've been playing this game since preseason one. I'm biased towards older champions. I love them. That's the game that I grew up playing, the older champions. But uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. Go ahead and leave a like if you liked it. Um, really appreciate all the feedback too that you guys like to leave. Um, if you have any, and like I said, if you're more experienced than any of these champions or I, with these items than I am, go ahead and leave a comment. I'd love to read them because these patch notes are just mostly my opinion as a player. They don't represent the views of like a community. So I'd like to see what you guys have to say about them. But thank you for watching. Go ahead and like, comment, subscribe, thumbs up, fucking YouTube. Clickbait. Bye, guys.